What's going on, Workforce? Brian and Chris here, and today we're going to be talking about everything we know about Endwalker post-media expansion. What is included in 6.0 as we barrel towards the future of Final Fantasy, as well as we look forward to the future of what Yoshi P continues to tease as to follow the expansion, which is a, it's going to be interesting. We talked about it a little bit in our last video. If you guys missed that, be sure to check the playlist below. That way you can get caught up on any of our content here. Two epic announcements for you guys if you're not uh following the podcast channel this week we got jesse cox and ren they're joining we're going to be talking about uh all of n walker and the future of final fantasy this thursday 10 30 a.m central uh you should see the uh the link on the community page or in our discord and you can always join our discord to come hang out with us and play some games from time to time second announcement uh if you want to find out what todd's favorite cereal is he's got a uh, he's got uh, some collabs going on with chris over on uh, gaming kind of facebook i'm also i uh, have a facebook page That's as well pre-show of us you were there i know um <laughs> I, I know what it is i also follow your facebook page because i'm a good friend so be a good friend Thanks, and man. follow uh facebook uh for chris and for myself we'll have the links uh in the description for you guys if you want to make it fast easy simple click and follow i uh, appreciate you guys for your support but let's talk about what we know about n walker i know we're getting sage and reaper and uh, end of the video, is that it? Or like, or, or is there more that we can expect? So, um, I mean, so we know we're getting 30% more story that is going to be filled with 50% more words. Um, so we, we know we're getting a dense story, end of the saga. More voice uh, acting. We know we're getting, we know about class updates at this point. Everybody's yeah. aware. We know, you know, we know the name of the raid. We know the name of the, the Lions raid. We know the dungeons. Um, we're aware of all that stuff. Um, at this point, people are starting to ask questions about what comes next after yes. 6.0. We're pretty fleshed out as far as what 6.0 launch will look like. Yeah. Um, and anything else would require spoilery stuff. There was some stuff in like Zeppelin's interview where he's like, I don't know. With, with I would tell you to look for one thing. And she's like, okay, could you tell me about the one thing? And he's like, nah, it's maybe two things. Like, <laughs> he just didn't even, like, the, no. With I'm the not exception, though, of anything. like PvP and uh, crafting changes, <laughs> yeah. crafting gathering, when. And we know a date for that, yes. November 5th. Guys, we'll be covering it live for you uh, as well. But so th right. that's the, we know that's coming, but we don't know what's coming for that. So that's, we'll update you guys more on that here in the future. In PvP go. mode, we know Blue Mage is going to get updated this expansion. We don't know when or how. We do know it is getting updated. That yeah. was confirmed. Um, oh, good. We do know that Hildebrand um, is coming back. There we go. Um, Hildebrand, uh, he said he, uh, this was in the uh, PSU universe, which is uh, actually Chili. was attended directly by Chili. Yeah. Uh, and said, I would like to inform you of some sightings of Hildebrand. Uh, <laughs> that was the response to that. So he's he's hopeful that uh, that'll he's he's hopeful we'll be able to find Hildebrand again, mm -hmm. uh, which I think was the, the kindest way of hinting. Yeah. Um, Chili also went on to ask about deep dungeons. We, we've had people ask um, the. In the past, they said we were shocked by the number of people that were disappointed there was not a deep dungeon mm -hmm. in Shadowbringers, um, especially with Zadnor and Bosjet kind of filling some of the same needs, right? But um, we would like to look and see if we can put it in the 6.x series. Um, and instead, this time it said we want to plan for some type of content to be put in the 6.x series, and we would like to respond to those players about having on thought on our thoughts on what that needs to look like. At a future date so like yeah that becomes more of confirmation um now it is no longer if it is when yes um so that's a big pivot um we know that we are getting a new relic grind yep. uh that is going to look like the bosja's adnor stuff but not the bosja's adnor stuff keep in mind bosja's adnor was in plenty of ways very distinctly different than eureka for the fact that it was clearly inspired by um so he said that it'll be similar but not exactly uh, there will be a different nuance, and he he does like the content alternatives um, that that the Shadowbringers one offered. So he liked the idea of alternatives. It doesn't mean it'll ide be identical alternatives, but he liked that idea that there is kind of two paths to the relic. Um, it would be interesting seeing if they how they end up feeling about how the way those were tuned. Um, so all of that. You know, they talked about island. We talked about Island Sanctuary a little bit in the last video. There was a couple of little odd ones. Um, first of all, Asmongold asked the obligatory Mythic Plus Mythic question. Plus question yeah. uh, he said, are there plans for more challenging content for one to four players? And he said, we're looking 
this seems to be a large request from North America. Yeah. Because <laughs> we ask literally every, every time, time we get the chance. Yeah. Every time we get the chance, somebody asks it. Um, he said, we're looking forward to sharing details. Please look forward to it. Um, which in the context of a previous Frosty interview where he said, if they did this, it would likely be tied to Deep Dungeon, if anything. Yeah. Um, exactly. We know that this we know that this is not coming to Dungeon content because of everything they've said. Mm -hmm. This feels like the, the Deep Dungeon announcement could be a big deal. I'm I'm putting a lot of hope in into that because one of the things that doing it in the style of Deep Dungeon, the thing that I would say is that you obviously get the concept of the squares and, the, and they kind of build out the rooms. But then from an aesthetic perspective, it's like we've got so many dungeons. Imagine you combine our like just a volume of already created assets and dungeons, like all the pallets there. You have all kinds of enemies and bosses. Then you also take what we've learned from Eureka and Zadnor in that regard. So think of the, uh, you know, just think about the concept of the metals and the post metal grind, right? You get those additional buffs like if you want to go live in this system, you can. And guess what? It's not required to go do the raid. One of the, the nice pieces about it is that where I hear where Mythic Plus like jumps the shark and makes it un, you know, uh, like not fun is it becomes required content to do, you know, the content that everybody also wants to do. So this could be its own self-contained system where you, the player with one, two up to four players can then challenge yourself like we see with see people doing solo clears of deep dungeon people are making their own challenges and obviously that is exciting the fact that we have titles that are tied to that but to see more like they're doing with the like just the achievements alone the revision to the achievement system on top of then when we start talking about what's possible with deep dungeon has me really excited because it is the thing that i think naturally fits without having to add another level of progression that all of a sudden where you do because you don't want final fantasy to feel like a job right you don't want to sit here and be like i have to log in i have to go do right. this th these three things that i have no interest in doing just so i could do these two things that i am interested in doing but if i miss these three things then i'm going to fall off the train and i'm not going to be able to do th those other two things you know it's like that in and of itself but deep dungeon has that unique ability to say hey we're here you can you know we got a leaderboard like they, they're already setting the stage for so long. And I think them being able to take a, an expansion off, just like with Hildebrand could end up being a real big strength, making this a really exciting piece of content. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so I think so. I think, I, I think that more than Island Sanctuary, I would really take a look hard at um, the deep dungeon system. I think AI has been improved pretty massively as well. Mm -hmm. So it'd be interesting to see, uh, more complex boss encounters and all that. We know the trust system's gotten a pretty big over overhaul yeah. um, to be a lot more powerful. So it'd be really interesting to see there. Um, things feel like they're they're on pace. There was a question, not as part of an interview, um, but as part of the tour itself, where somebody from one of the press outlets was in Old Charlam, and they said, I can't seem to locate a jump puzzle. Is there is there not a jump puzzle in Charlam? And the staff um, took a bit to respond and then said, um, I, I, no, I, I don't think there is a jump puzzle in this build. Yeah. Now, there's a key end on the fin to that phrase in this in the, build. In this build, yeah. That feels like, hmm. oh. Uh, so I know people that have really enjoyed the jump puzzles, especially in um, the jump puzzles of Stormblood. It feels like a lot of things that were missed about Stormblood would be coming back in addition to everything that we added to Shadow Warriors. This expansion feels enormous. There's a question during the Asmund and Rich one about like, how is all this additional influx of players affected Endwalker? And he's like, honestly, it's it's too close to Endwalker for it to have had an effect. Like, will it have an yeah. effect long term? Yes. Probably. But like, it, no, this was already planned. Yeah. Um, it's too late. Um, there will be uh, Aetherite currents this time. It does seem like they're dropping back the number. So it'll be like three things with the compass, um, two with the main scenario. Oh, wow. So, okay. So like, it seems like a pretty massive cut there. He said he didn't want it to be very, very mean was the translation. That was a Dengeki article um, that went over that. And the Dengeki article is really hard to translate because the whole thing's posted in Japanese. So that is all Google Translate. The, uh, the thing about that is like whether it's five or 18 it, at the core of it, like it was always you unlock flying by completing the story of the zone regardless, because always the last, the last point was there. So 
them mm-hmm. moving it to like let's say three and, and two like you know if flying is uh, the last part of that that quest line you'll you know you won't have to go sit here and start having to trek down that as, as you work through it it's always interesting when an expansion launches because there will be those players who don't have flying and those who do and that's where like things like the the car mount multi-seater mounts end up being a huge help for players to be able to kind of get around the world uh and be able to kind of like unlock all of that but yeah okay Hey, man, I think uh, with hunts and fates with the bicolor gemstone, the aetherite current system no longer needs to be a way to explore. To, you can create room to explore yeah. through future beast tribes, through crafting and gathering, yeah. through um, through other. There are other ways to get us to use the whole map. It doesn't have to be. I proved that I stood in each geolocation once, and now that means that you built a good zone. And so, right. like, I think 100%. it can be used as a way to invite exploration. And beyond that, it starts to be a little redundant. Absolutely. Um, so I, I mean, other than that, like it was all it was all expected stuff. Um, I mean, I'll I'll go over all of it in one or more posts over on Gaming Kind of when I sum all these up, um, and see if anything else gets added because I do have three video interviews left to do. One has not been posted yet, so I couldn't mm-hmm. finish them all before this anyway. We also know this from our time is that uh, we know I know Harothgar getting some hats, some more hats. We got a Reaper, yeah, uh, Reaper, Dark Knight. Uh, red mage didn't get the red hat so it's like you know so it's not a hundred percent not and it could be just a build timing thing but like the, the question that i had the thing i don't know about n walker is will i be returning to being a harothgar after i after spending two years and shifting back to elf because i wanted to wear a cowboy hat i would love to do a cowboy hat on Hroth. i'm not gonna so- lie the female Roth was one of those stated as um, 6.1 or later it was stated in a 6.1 or later context that could seem 7.0 Okay. Um, okay. Well, I was like, so Whoa. I would I logically think it's 7.0. Yeah. Um, but because one of the phrasings that came across as the 6.1 or later instead of the 6.x to 7.0 phrasing, they're both they both mean the same timeline if you break them down. Because the 6.1 is in that translation, there are a handful of people expecting us to get female Roth 6.1, 6.2. I don't see any way that happens. Not to mention, we get new races every expansion, and they've said they don't want to add more races. So Not in my mind, saving. Mm-hmm. But, but saving female yeah. Roth for a 7.0 yeah. drop feels really logical because if they give us yeah. Bunny Boys at 6.0 and Roth at 6.3, people are going to feel really good, right? You yeah. let all your you let all your you let your kids open all their Christmas gifts on Christmas Eve until Christmas morning when your other you know when a kid who decided to wait gets to open theirs and they're like oh well how come they have more gifts because yeah. they didn't open them all early right. and so I think there is something about pacing. Um, there was a Zeppelin question about like, how do you feel about it? You think you do, but you don't. And I think that I, I, he, he very, very calmly addressed that. But I do think this is where that comes into play. I think he has to, I think he has to slow the pace of things being added to the game because otherwise we end up with these huge dry spells mm-hmm. where people is like, oh, I gave you both things up front. And then I said, okay, hold on to these. And then you didn't. And then now you're like, why did it take another year? It's like, you were supposed to take your time. The, uh, I think when we look at Enderwalker, I had a thought because like there's something that when you you were just talking, it kind of pop, popped in my mind, popped out. So if it comes back, I'll I'll be sure to jump in on this video with it. But the uh, when we look at what what we're getting with Enderwalker, I I've long speculated, I just long feel that like this is a milestone, and so we, like all of our thought, all of our training up to this point has been predicated on what they established in 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, 5.0, and 6.0 is a bookend. And so essentially like, yes, like it sounds like with N Walker, we're getting the story, we're getting the dungeons, we're getting the, the jobs, like to like somebody who's been a long time player, it, it could seem like, oh, what, what else? Like, okay. But I just continue to look at like all these interviews and look at what he keeps kind of referring to 6.1 Mioni's video with, uh, even with Larry, with, uh, you know, Zeplo, with, with Asmongold. Like a lot of it is that Yoshi P I think is ready to really share what he's, what he's been working on. Um, and I think that like calls into question, like, is it possible? Cause it, his line, like I, I, you never said you would do another job. And you know, he's like, I said, I never said I wouldn't. I, I just said that it's hard. I said, it's really hard, you know? And so that when it comes down to it, I'm, I don't know. I think final fantasy 14 is, is setting itself up to be a really, really strong position. Uh, and capitalize off that and so like him saying where the the last two million players 
Like it doesn't impact it. And the reason it doesn't impact it is because you don't make business budget decisions based off of an event that you couldn't predict, right? You sit down and say, as a company, here's how we can make sure everybody is getting paid. Because if we can't do that, they're going to stop working and then it all kind of drives down. We want to make sure we got all this runway. So we set budgets and then they execute the budget. So the budget set, what this new 2 million and more is going to continue to do is going to say, Hey, you know, that, that line, we're going to, we're going to spare no expense to final fantasy 14. Awesome. Guess what? That spare no expense actually just continue to grow because it becomes real money that we can budget for this game. And like you and I are saying, like, I, I honestly think that we're going to be able to be reacting to some pretty big news here in the next six months. I will say um, it was in the uh, most recent episode of Aetherite Radio, so I don't know if that's gone live. I watched it live. Um, Fusion uh-huh. has been covering this game a long time. <laughs> yeah. And Fusion said there was something different about the way, and he's and he's had the opportunity because Gamer Escape has been such a large impact on the 14 community, he's had a chance to interview Yoshi P. I assume the only people who've interviewed him more is like, I assume he's right up there with like Mr. Happy. Yeah. I assume it's a very short list of people that have had the opportunity to interview him that many times over that many mm-hmm. years. Yeah. He's also coming and on our podcast. We've got, we're, we're working on the date too. So surprise. <laughs> Go ahead. We, we have a lot of great guests coming up. Um, and one of the things that fusion said was there was something different over mm-hmm. all the other times he's interviewed him, Yep. how he acted and having watched a lot of these interviews, I will say his mannerisms, there is, he's, he's got some swagger. He's sitting He's sitting on a pile of boom. He's gotten some swagger. It's and so like, there's some confidence there. Like that... If you can see the hairs on the, on my arm, like I tell you this as somebody who just like with fusion for the last 11 years, like, I don't want to say what I think it is because I've already stated that. And I don't want to give people false hope because it definitely might not be. <laughs> However, I'm telling you, just like you're saying with his swagger, like the guy sitting back and saying, cool, you know what we've done? We've done the impossible. Now, when you have the full force of Square Enix behind you, go play New World for like 10 minutes and tell yeah, me Square yeah. Enix can't do that. You go play that game and tell me that they cannot. I have, um, I have seen their engines. I have seen what they can do. I I don't know if it's going to be that. I'm just saying that. Meaning that yeah, if you have their a full force about... of focus, like it's, I think it's going to freaking blow people's minds. Like it doesn't need to be that, but it just needs to be like, I think we're sitting here like Yoshi P saying like, all right, we're ready. Like we've, we've played defense. We've played, we played midfield. Now we're in our striking position. Let's go. So to give some, to, to, to support your point, yeah. I would say Larry Zars, how do you overcome error technical debt question yeah. comes into play yep. where he said, we don't have any what debt technical remaining debt? from 1.0. <laughs> yeah. What debt? What debt? Are you right? Like about? Lama Todd yeah. tweeting out that um, he's now grown big enough on Twitch that he just paid off the last of his credit card debt. So huge congratulations yeah. to Lama Todd. Yes, That's Todd a big did. moment in anybody's yeah. life is when you get get a big mountain of debt, get those, celebrate those, um, but not by taking out debt. And uh, and so you know him talking about he and he listed it. And he's like, no, hitbox is adjusted, achievements reju- adjusted. Friends list, you know, like it's yeah, coming. It, friends list changes. It's coming. coming. Yeah. Gl- glamour place. We're looking at it. We're working on um, it. We do all these things in the background. And he's like, we have wiped out all of 1.0 when we did 2.0. And we have wiped out like, most of 2.0. We do these things as we go. Um, and so I think that supports what you're saying. Yeah. I will say the counterpoint to what you're saying is his Asmongold response where he talked about how important it is that there's multiple MMOs in the space that yep. you get these young, hungry developers coming in and challenging what can be done. Yeah. And so they can't necessarily do what the young guys are doing because they, there's there's going to be there's going to be people who take risks that Square Enix isn't even looking at. Right. They're not going to take. Um, and so draw some of those are they can't do it not because they can't, but because they weren't even yeah. looking that way. They're going to draw inspiration, and that's the thing that I think when we see with WoW's like I'll, I'll call it normalization. And then mm-hmm. essentially where there's no real ruling king that you have a lot of people willing and enjoying the, the the thing. So it's like, oh, this is a really interesting idea. Oh, that's a really interesting idea. And then I think as a genre as a whole, we can start to see like kind of a rising tide bringing all ships in line also mm-hmm. from the Asmund uh, interview. And I think that's going to be huge. So like, yeah, I'm, you know, I see chess saying like, I don't want it to be, like, I'm not saying that they're going to turn this into that game and nor should they, but I'm saying that 
you could sit down and say, well, what do we need? What can, what can we do in this game? And really kind of lean into some ideas and some investments. Actually, what we've called for a long time, take some risks where Yoshi P has stated they have not been able to. They have not been able to take risks with this game because of how they had to play defense. They didn't have a choice to make the MMO that they wanted. They had to make the MMO that saved the company. They've done that. They've done that in spades. And now it's like, okay, what do we want to do next? And that has me excited because it, it doesn't need to be the vision that Brian has for Final Fantasy 14. I don't actually really want that game, but I want an empowered Yoshi P to really lean, like really lean into like, what do they really want to create? Like, what do they want this game to be for the next 10 years? It's been announced over 11 years. ARR is coming. It's already eight years old. Like we're talking about cloud technology, all the advancements that, that they can, they don't take advantage of because it doesn't make sense yet, but they've tested it on the cloud, like in terms of servers, like what could they do if given the, the opportunities? And I, I say Square Enix has given them the opportunities and I couldn't be happier as a, as a, as a veteran, but also as a fan of this game. And I think it's something that should get people. Yeah. Like you said, he's got a swagger. He's got like that swagger is not lying, dude. Yeah. And then no, there's, there's, there's something he knows what he's got coming um, and he feels pretty confident. Yeah, so that's it. If, if he's going to hit a, hit a brick wall, he is not holding his arms up. He is going to hit that thing straight on. <laughs> there is a confidence here that just says like, what wall? There's a um, confidence, but there's also that he's, he, there's a humility in it, like in that regards. Like he, he's, he's aware of where his strength comes from. Exactly. It's not, it, it's not, it's not a, it's not a narcissistic, like egotistical, like mm -hmm. self-inflated confidence. Exactly. It's, it's, he still won't talk no, bad about we people. are like he still won't we be are like oh look at wow like no he still won't ever say that and that's 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 he'll honestly, throw some shade yeah, he'll throw shade but that's <laughs> a, i think it's a it's a bigger it's a bigger strength point but um <laughs> anyway guys that's what we know uh what's coming with n walker uh from a content perspective that's what we know what's happening beyond uh yeah. the release of the expansion so far and we're gonna be sure to keep you, you guys golden saucer there's all sorts of things that are expected that will happen yeah and uh and honestly, I think we're going to be buckling it up for an incredible journey alongside right with you guys. So hopefully you're having fun with this game. And if you're on a break, I'm looking forward to having you return and get to uh, go hands on and experience it. But Chris, why don't you take us out, man? Guys, these questions and many, many more will be summed up over on Gaming Kinda. But if you have questions about Summoner and all that, I've been seeing a lot of those pop up. Questions about healers, I've been seeing a lot of those pop up. Questions about controllers. I saw a number of those in the Reddit AMA this weekend. Go over there and ask those on a Ginger Prime video, and Brian will respond to you as time allows. Uh, stay tuned for all of our many podcasts. We have a ton of great ones coming up. Jesse Cox and Ren are just starting the season of podcasts to take us in an endwalker. Thank you so much for hanging out. We'll see you next time.